Have you ever had somebody tell you that your kitchen is too small? I don't know how you cook in there. How do you make good food when you have such a tiny living space? Oh, I could never do that. Do any of these things sound familiar? Hi everybody, I am so excited to bring you this episode. Cooking in my van. Cooking, foraging, bringing the outside world, natural plants in is one of my favorite things to do. And most of all, I love doing it with unusual ingredients. Hopefully I haven't run out of gas. Here are my two blossoms. This is an elderflower and it is from the red elderflower, not the black elderflower. And this is maple blossom. These eventually turn into maple keys. When they're soft like this, you can eat them and make them into tasty pancakes or bread or use them as fiber and salads and stuff like that. Delicious. And these smell absolutely divine. Um, and I can't wait to make a whole ton of syrup and put it in the freezer um, for those elderflower cocktails. The rest of this entire basket is maple blossoms. So many of them, they come out in spring. It's not the leaves, it's the flowers that turn into seeds eventually. But they taste delicious. I'm gonna turn on my fan to ventilate a little bit so that this water I'm boiling doesn't create lots of humidity in here. I have just put all of the elder flowers in that water and my hands are covered in pollen. I've got this like sheen of yellow on it, which I don't know if you can see, but it's beautiful. My whole house smells like elderflower. It's beautiful. It's one of my favorite things, favorite flavors. I think once that's done, then I will make some maple blossom pancakes for dinner. On the oven here, you can hear I've got some pumpkin cooking on top of the fireplace because with using this much propane for this, I was like, I can just burn some toilet paper rubbish and paper rubbish and cook some pumpkin while I'm at it and save some fuel. I love this. These are only gonna get uh, frozen, not like canned canned. When freezing, don't fill all the way at the top because you'll crack the glass. Elderflower cordial. Ta da! Oh, it's so good.
and tastes really good with gin. Anyway, I'm going to take the pumpkin off of the stove for dinner. in the mail I'm so excited so I'll get those sent out soon it's time to make maple blossom pancakes I managed to pick up maple blossoms as well as my elderflower still looking for some magnolia flowers this spring but maple blossoms we have so we're gonna make a pancake maybe several because I have a lot here and the pancakes will be really nice heated up tomorrow Actually, if I'm going to do that much, I'm going to need a bigger bowl. My friend today said that they taste like broccoli. The broccoli fritter. And I use the word pancake to mean a savory thing, not a sweet thing. But I notice that is not how most Canadians or Americans refer to pancakes. not to make a soggy batter it's the idea is to make just enough batter to stick them all together and then a splash of water Isn't that like beautiful? Let's turn on the Ooh. It's gonna go in the frying pan and cook up to a really nice tasty batter. hungry. This is going to be a great dinner. I'm really excited about it. It would be even better if I had eggs, but I am Baroque! Yum, yum, yum. I think I was kidding myself when I said, maybe there'll be a pancake le left, left for tomorrow. Nope, this is the second one, and I've already eaten the first one. Oh, so yum. Mm. 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 Yum. It's got this fibrous, fresh, doughy, salty, because I put a little extra salt in it. Taste, it's so good. Yum. Mmm. What kind of ambulance is this? This is a Braun Chief XL with a Ford E450 front end on it. It was remounted. The, the box is from 2003. The vehicle is from 2014. 
an E450, so a one and a half ton Ford engine, a V10 gas. She's a sexy beast. Yes, she is. Okay, wh how heavy is this vehicle? This is about 11,600 pounds fully loaded with fuel, water, and meat, which translates to under 5,300 kilo. The power system is a Blue Eddy AC200 Max with an extra B230 battery for a total of just under 410 amp hours. 800 to 20 watts on the roof. That's a decent power system. Where's your favorite place to take it? Right now, Canada. <laughs> Now this is ambulance is different to the Canadian ambulances? Yes, it's broader and taller and built on a heavier frame. I think Canadian ambulances need to be a lot more nimble because of the more forested nature, especially here in BC. Starlink adapt a connector. Yeah, I have a quick release on my Starlink, so I just plug the cable in there. What kind of fridge do you have? It's a Domenda. It's just another one of the knockoffs. It's not a Dometic. I, I <laughs> imagine they probably named it that way to confuse people. And these cupboards are all original? Yes, they are. If people are looking to buy an ambulance, what would you want to tell them? Care about the engine and the transmission and the rust. Everything else you can alter and then care about your roof height because that will determine how expensive your ambulance is. The shorter the cheaper generally. It's hard to find an ambulance tall enough for most people to stand in. What has been your most critical thing to have with you? Well, I suppose it's the jump starter even though I've never needed it just because that allows me to get out if something bad happens. Um, but I'm, I'm set up exactly as I choose to be here. I've had other rigs more involved, more systems. I've chosen to simplify. Is that simplifying is why you chose an ambulance? Yes, I also had a, a trailer and truck at the same time and this just simply allows me to be more nimble and particularly more nimble in forested areas where I, I can't really see how to get in and out as easily. If there was one thing in here that you would change, what would it be? 4x4 four four instead of 4x2. <laughs> Anything extra that you would like to share with people watching about this ambulance? Ambulances are really stout. They have many backups in place to make sure the patients are safe. Um, and they're really, really worth getting if you want to do a fairly minimal build and have a super stout vehicle. They've been well cared for generally. Someone else's ambulance conversion is a bigger question. Uh-huh. So you advise people to buy the ambulances direct from their previous job? If you possibly can, yes. And if not, try to buy one that's been documented as it's been built so that you know what's behind the things that are already in. so beautiful and it's a perfect time to be I don't know but I'm excited and how can you not be excited when weather looks like this excited.
just your usual summer's day collecting some Nootka roses. This is a native rose bush, wild rose. It smells amazing. Look at it, it's a whole bush. It's covered in roses. Smells amazing. Drying rose petals. Went and picked these the other day. Oh, they're so beautiful. Putting this over top so they don't get dusty. this amazing immersion blender which Boho Blue, Blue Van gave me and I love it it's so great do you know how wonderful it is to have a battery system that supports my power I'm not plugged in I'm just running off battery power and it's so great a little while later and we have this Beautiful blendy blendy. I'm gonna add a little more oil to make it more of a dressing, to make it more runny. And then I'm gonna eat it with my egg breakfast. Oh, look at this amazing color.
today I have given, been given this amazing gift by a friend of Garlic Scapes. Garlic Scape is the flower, the curly piece before it flowers that goes off of, grows off of the top of garlic bulbs. A lot of farms have them. It is not something that you normally see sold in your everyday supermarket. If you have like a country farm store, maybe you might see a few of those. I have got the privilege of a dear friend, thanks Charlotte, who has a big farm that they have access to, to share with me this. Look at the size of this bag. This bag is full of garlic scapes. If you've ever grown garlic before, you'll recognize these. Step one is to take all of these garlic scapes and blend them. So I have borrowed a very big blender. I have an enormous stack of Parmesan cheese and I bought a whole lot of extra olive oil specifically for this project. So let's get started. Right. I have this beautiful big blender here. You've probably seen my little one that lives up here. It is way too small for this project. This is my commercial kitchen ver version but lent to me by a friend. I've got to blend all of this up and put it in big bowls so that I can make garlic scape pesto. Making and freezing pesto for the winter months when fresh greens like this are not available, for pastas, for toast, for crackers, for sandwiches, oh, for flavoring other foods. Mwah, mwah. It's one of my favorite, favorite things to eat. Let's do it. huge bag I think I'm gonna have to chop it all up because handfuls like this are not gonna fit in here straight up so let's do that Full bowl, second bowl, and I have maybe one third left to go. This is a whole big bowl of garlic scapes. Doesn't this look amazing? I am definitely going to have to split it into two bowls in order to mix the oil in and the cheese, but that is that part of the job done. I'm so stoked, this is so fun. The house smells like beautiful fresh garlic but not too pungent and overwhelming. Now that we have all this blended garlic, it is time to blend the cheese with the nuts. Now most people when you're making basil pesto you would make it with uh, pine nuts, but pine nuts are incredibly expensive. So these are raw bulk uh, cashew nut pieces, cheaper and your usual Parmesan. Amazing. You get the gist. We're gonna blend this and see what happens. Right, folks, now it is time to do the assembly of all these pieces. I have my cheese and my nuts, all of the garlic, all of the olive oil, time to put it together. Because both of these two bowls are super full, I have a third bowl, which I'm gonna mix up small batches until these bowls are <laughs> empty enough to combine. This is a bulk problem in a small kitchen space, but tasty and worth it. So bring it on. Ow. This is incredible. Woohoo! 
I'm trying to be very careful not to make a huge mess because I don't need any more rodents. But I will vacuum and clean up afterwards. So I need to do this and then I also need to add a whole lot of salt. So mix together. Wish me luck. I've only got to do this like a hundred more times. development this bag is full of jars in a van does not need to be difficult. It does not need to be exclusionary of spaces and methods of cooking like my fireplace here. You can cook just as well in small spaces, I have a whole oven here, as you can in large kitchens. Sometimes it just is the quantity that is different. If you enjoyed this week's video, thanks so much for watching. I hope you can find some garlic scapes from a local farm stand. Try those unusual ingredients. Go for it. Go out and give it a go. Um, thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe. I know everybody's like, oh, it's free, but it's the creator's way of saying I really appreciate the th you being here I really appreciate you coming along this journey with me because it makes a difference to me and that little subscription like tells me you value watching my videos which is so valuable when the ether of the big internet seems like it shouting into the void a big huge thank you to my Patreons, giving you some extra bits and pieces this week and I'm starting to see that your postcards have arrived. That's really exciting. <sighs> we got this. I can't wait to see you all for the next video next week. I'll see you all next Friday. Bye.